opposite the Sun in Taurus is the climax, the final release of our deeply dynamic transformational month of April. This is the finale to our eclipse season. This is the finale of our Mercury retrograde in Aries. And so this is really the culmination and the final purge, release, letting go. One of the most dynamic months of the entire year. This whole month has been about change and we continue this process into the end of April. And when we move into May, we really will begin to move forward with this new identity, this new set of values, this new courage, this new bravery, and what I believe to be really this new life we are moving into. How are you guys feeling? This month has been very intense. I've had a total identity crisis, death, questioning of everything in my life, and I'm sure I'm not alone. I think a lot of people have been going through a lot of change, a lot of contemplation, a lot of reevaluating where are we now. And that truly has been the theme over this entire month. That last total solar eclipse on the 8th of April was brutal. It was very, very revealing. I personally was left exhausted. I couldn't leave my home that day. I was in a deep, deep purge. It really felt like a death rebirth process. And this full moon in Scorpio is really that finale. And it is your opportunity to let go and grieve and feel everything that we have been through. It has not been easy, it has been intense, there's been a lot of emotions, there's been a lot of chaos, confusion, miscommunications, things not working. We are radically expanding who we came here to be. We are all in the pressure cooker and depending on your level of consciousness, you are being pushed into the unknown future. We are being forced to let go of what has worked before because it really doesn't work anymore. So if you've been going through it, I feel you deeply. And I know there's a greater purpose for this transformational work. And I feel so much joy deep in my heart knowing that Finally, more souls than ever, more humans are stepping into their consciousness awakening, are stepping into their spiritual up-leveling. They are committing to the reason why they are here. So just know that if you're feeling exhausted like I am today, just exhausted after this last month just know that it's okay and take this week to really allow yourself to go through the process of that releasing and that letting go what has happened take time to understand to contemplate what is leaving your life what has died i feel this is a really massive ego death for many of us where we, our identity in the world has changed and we don't know who exactly we are becoming, but we know that the old identity is done. It is finished. It has ended. I personally have been grieving a lot, a lot of emotion about the identity that I have literally been living for half of my life. And it's been really hard to understand that I don't know exactly where I'm going. I don't know exactly how this is gonna work, but 
I know with certainty that I will know when the time is perfect and that my faith has never been stronger in the possibility of my blossoming like this bloom as we enter Taurus season. This is the month of the blooming. This is like the spring. This is the opening, the flowering of who am I now? Now that I have gone deep into the depths of my brave, courageous, independent examination of self, now it's about what do I value? What do I honor and how can I be self-sufficient and self-autonomous in being, this is why I am here. This is what I'm here to do. Taurus is the sign of earth consciousness, the physical world, the body. This is about being grounded. This is being in touch with nature. This is going to the roots, feeling the earth and feeling what the body needs. This is about caring for our body, our physical vessel. This is about taking care of our physical needs, our money, our finances, our resources. What do we need to cultivate now? What are we going to focus on? What do we value now? And what is important for us to build and create in the physical world? Who are the people that align with these values? Taurus season is about enjoying the sensual pleasures of this physical world, about enjoying the sensuality of being human, delicious food and wine and tasting and gorgeous flowers. I was gifted with this this morning for this video and this orchid bloom, like the spring, the flowers, seeing the beauty all around and really appreciating the physical sensations. This is about the physical world. What are we creating here on earth? We've had this very intense week, this very powerful conjunction, one of the biggest of the year. Jupiter, the planet of expansion, abundance, the future, expansive long-term vision, and the intuition, the wisdom, the sage energy in Taurus, the physical reality, joining forces with Uranus, the awakener. This is lightning. This is the awakening energy. This is revolution, rebellion. This is liberation. This is shocking, unexpected twists of fate energy shocking us into our radical expansion. So we've been feeling this all this past week leading up into this full moon and this aspect is right now exact. 21, 21 degrees of Taurus. So wherever you have between 19 and 23, Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, we are being blasted with this new cycle. We are ending a 14 year cycle and we are beginning a 14 year cycle. And for those of us with points and planets at that place in the zodiac, this is very powerful upgrading. This is a new cycle. The last time this conjunction happened in Taurus was in 1941. So how can we now align with our intuitive selves, with our, what are we here to do in the world? And it's linked with spirituality. It's about the expansion of consciousness, the expansion of our, devotion to our spiritual world and to our gifts and what we are here to bring to earth, bringing the heaven to earth. This is receiving downloads, realizations, illuminations. At the exact same time, we have the finale of Mercury retrograde in Aries, our ego death, reevaluating the identity. It's been with Chiron. It's been a deep wound. We've been healing ego wounding. 
We've been looking at the deep wounding we have with the self, the I am, who am I? So we've been doing this deep reviewing, this healing process. That solar eclipse was in that exact positioning, 16 degrees of Aries. So we are having the finale with Mercury retrograde exact on the North Node, our collective destiny at the exact time of this full moon. So we really are in those last moments of reevaluating, reassessing, what have we learned in this last three weeks portal? It's beautiful to see so many people <laughs> realizing how powerful Mercury retrograde is. I've had people that have never paid attention or even cared about these things realize their cars breaking down, their technology stalling, their miscommunications, glitches in the technology, all kinds of very obvious examples of Mercury retrograde when we are reviewing technology communication. So during this full moon, we're also coming to the climax realizations of that retrograde, our mind, the way we communicate, the way we think. And now for the climactic full moon, perhaps the most intense full moon of our entire year in Scorpio, it's gonna be at almost 1 a.m. on Wednesday, London time. It's at four degrees of Scorpio. The reason it's one of the most intense full moons of the year is because Scorpio full moon is expanding, enhancing the energy of the moon, which is the emotional realm, the feelings, and the intensity comes from Scorpio being the most intense sign in the zodiac, the depth, the feeling, and also to do with the fact that Scorpio is about death and rebirth. It's about power and control, and it's really about releasing this full moon. All full moons are about releasing, but when it's in Scorpio, it is a deep release, a purge, a letting go, and allowing ourselves to feel into that discomfort. The moon is not comfortable in Scorpio because it is at home in Taurus, the opposite sign. So it's like a disconnect. So this energy is not comfortable for most people. Um, and it brings up deep emotional themes. If that wasn't intense enough, yep, it is squaring, which is an aspect of stress, of tension, Pluto. Pluto's the ruler of Scorpio along with Mars, and Pluto is the planet that represents the soul, evolution. It is the planet of death, rebirth, transformation, metamorphosis, power and control. It is here to force us into our evolution. And so there's no doubt that this moon is here to push us further along on our evolutionary journey moon the full moon in scorpio opposite the sun in taurus is known as the buddha full moon because buddha was born was enlightened and died on a scorpio full moon knowing that information gives you the idea of how intense and transformational and illuminating this is energy of the deep occult. This is the psychic. This is the spiritual. This is the, the realms of alchemy, death, rebirth. I made an entire video deeply explaining Scorpio energy. For those who don't understand, it's a very misunderstood sign. I have a deep understanding of this sign. I was born with this exact full moon. 29 degrees, Scorpio full moon, opposite my sun in Taurus, with Uranus in Scorpio and my IC, my most private part in Scorpio. I have a deep, deep understanding of Scorpio energy. It's not an easy energy. It, it has a lot of shadow. It's famously known for the shadow 
the manipulation, betrayal, jealousy, envy, obsessive, um, all those darker shadow realms of Scorpio. So if you want to know more, check out my video. It explains it in depth, all about Scorpio energy. There is a deep beauty to Scorpio because it is the alchemist, the shaman, the eagle. It's the phoenix burning itself to rise. There is a beautiful release possible with Scorpio. And the deepest desire of Scorpio is to merge with source, okay? Merging with our home where we come from, source, God, creator and also merging deeply with another. Scorpio is deeply insecure and vulnerable and sensitive and feels everything. And the shadow, another shadow Scorpio is hiding. We're afraid of feeling so deeply. We're afraid of rejection. We're afraid of betrayal. We're afraid of abandonment. Because this full moon has so much energy associated with change, revolution, transformation, and letting go. The biggest lesson of Scorpio is learning to let go gracefully. Scorpio wants to hold on, all the fixed signs do. Taurus wants to hold on to that comfort zone. It doesn't wanna leave the comfort of what it knows even though it sees only this much. We can get stuck, I know I'm a Taurus sun, we get stuck in the comfort zone easily. And this energy is not gonna allow us to stay in that comfort zone. It is going to force us, push us out into the world, into our destiny. All of this energy in this climactic moment is asking you to honor your metamorphosis, honor your process, honor your life until now, because I feel this is a death portal. And when I say death, I mean, a letting go of an old way of being to allow yourself to become a new self, a new being. Who do you identify as now? I believe this is such a beautiful opportunity to step into our power, our purpose, our mission, our destiny. It is about us choosing what it is that we truly align with, no longer accepting things that are not aligned with who we are. We are being asked to leave the comfort zone. We are being asked to let go. So honor this transformation, which is hard, is emotional. Give yourself time to grieve, to let go, make a ritual to release. Maybe you need to cry. Maybe you need to dance. Maybe you need to scream. Maybe it's anger. Maybe you need to release your rage. Maybe you need to release your shame. Shame is a huge theme of Scorpio as well. There is a deep sexual energy with the Taurus Scorpio aspect. Perhaps it's a cathartic releasing of an identity of sexuality. Whatever is coming up for you, whatever shadow work, whatever is being illuminated with this full moon, the full moon shining a light into the darkness. This is about embracing the darkness as part of you, acknowledging that we are not all joy and bliss and light and unicorns and rainbows we are darkness as well and that is not something to be ashamed of that is being human can we accept what we have done in the past can we accept who we are can we accept the way we have treated others can we accept the way we have treated ourselves can we allow ourselves to hold ourselves the way we deeply desire to be held by the universe? Can we give ourselves that grace to forgive ourselves for being human? It has been such a challenge, such a struggle to be on earth. I know I feel so deeply the human 
condition of suffering and suffering is the gateway to awareness, to compassion, to empathy, to love. Can you accept what has happened and can you release it with grace, saying goodbye to everything that no longer serves you? Can you honor who you're meant to be in this life? Can you honor the being? Can you allow yourself to step into the power? Because you staying small does not serve anyone. For those of us with consciousness and love in our hearts, us hiding away from the world does not serve ourselves. It does not serve anyone. Let us have the courage, the bravery to risk it all, to be who we truly are, to shine without needing the other to validate us. Can we step into that autonomous self, sufficient love, Taurus, Aries, and can we let go, Pisces, Scorpio, can we let go with grace? The human design, the gene keys aligns with this beautifully. The sun has just entered the 27th gate of the nurturer of caring. And this is about caring for oneself, one's body first and then overflowing with nurturing, loving, caring for the other. So all this week, let us care deeply for ourselves and care for the other, nurture the other when we are okay, when we can, when it overflows like wine, when we're not overextending ourselves. At the same time, the full moon is in gate 28. This is the gate of the game player. This is part of the channel of struggle. What is worth fighting for? This is embracing our shadows. This is looking and seeing what is actually worth our fight and what is worth pursuing. What is the purpose of our life? And let us understand that this will bring themes of the fear of purposelessness. This is a deep fear that we, there's no point to this life. And so let us have the courage to step into our purpose and let us not get blinded by the chaos, the sadness, the despair, the confusion of the world. Let us focus on the being we long to be. Let us be the change we are here to create in the world. Let us envision a future with our deep will center activated. The heart is activated with that 2551. Let us shocking twists and turns. Let us be surprised into the revolution of who we are here to become. It's always, this is about love. This is always about coming back into the heart. All this week, take such good care of yourself. Listen, stop. This morning I woke up exhausted. I worked so hard last week to finish a song. That's a deep, deep, deep ceremony of letting go, of holding back. It was really emotional and cathartic process. I wrote this song, my first song I wrote in Portuguese, and it's called Coruja, it's called The Owl, and it really speaks to a story of the mystical, mythical creature of the owl visiting me at a moment when I didn't want to live, when I didn't want to be on earth, and really speaks of how this being, this messenger tells me there's a reason you're here on earth. And so, so this song is really deeply cathartic to me. And so sharing it, I want to remind you there's a reason you're here. And <laughs> I'm so emotional. <laughs> 
Let us have the courage, the bravery to understand why <laughs> there is a purpose for you being here. If you exist, existence needs you. And so I ask that you take this time to listen to your heart, to your soul and understand there's a greater purpose to being here on earth. And no matter what suffering, sadness, pain, doubt, confusion, or fear of purposelessness, I am here to tell you, we need you. <laughs> we need you to be beautiful because you are beautiful, because you exist, you are completely unique. And we need you <laughs> to awaken and be the gorgeous flower that you are here to be. Let us celebrate each and every one of us. The challenge of being human is real. And so take this time to purge, to listen, to feel deeply into what you feel. <sighs> Write, journal, take a bath, walk in nature, Go get a massage, cry, listen to the music that makes you feel whatever you need to feel. I am wishing you a beautiful, beautiful, illuminating, powerful, transformational full moon. From my Scorpio moon, Taurus sun, to yours, I wish all the Taurus suns such a beautiful rebirthing solar return this month. And again, I am here as a guide. A new term that's come to me. Thank you, Joanna, for this beautiful term. She suggested that I call myself the soul consultant because that's really what I do. I receive people that need a consultation about their soul, their deepest soul desires and how to align with that in this life. So I do private readings. I do mentorship for people who want deeper support. Send me a private message. I'm sending you so much love. Beijinhos from Madeira Island. Take care.